This is the handover for your Luna X-Star. We'll begin on the outside of the van. At the front adjacent to the cab door, we've got your diesel filler cap. So ignition key in, twist the key and release. And obviously allows you then to fill up with diesel. Further along, you've got your toilet cassette. There is a lock key for operating it, but make sure that both buttons are depressed in and you can open up to reveal the cassette. Cassettes on these come in two parts. So at the top, you've got a swing out neck into which you add a mixture of fresh water and a pink chemical to make up the flushing solution. As you're filling up that reservoir, you'll see in a sight tube on the right hand side, the water level come up a little bit like a jug kettle. Winter storage, pull that tube forward, tip it away, and that should allow you then to drain it out accordingly. Push it back up the way. For the cassette itself, pull up on the green, the small green tab, draw the cassette towards you. It should come forward nice and easily. If it doesn't, it might be that the slider inside is not shut properly. On a campsite, you'll have collection points for these to go into. So extend the neck out, remove the green cap entirely, and then gradually tip up. And as you're doing so, press in on the green button at the top and your waste should discharge out of the cassette itself. Before you load it back in, there's a measuring cup inside the top of the cap. So up to a capful of your base chemical, or you can use a sachet uh, as well, mixed with a couple of litres of water. Once you've put the two chemical water and chemicals together, just give it a little swirl round and then lock and slide the cassette back into the storage space. It goes back in, it should go back in with a fairly firm clunk and it should hold in position. Next door, you've got your gas locker. With the keys, the lever should release. You should be able to turn and open up. Previous owners kindly left you a gas cylinder in here. On top of the cylinder, just tip it forward slightly so you can see what I'm gonna do you'll see that you've got a brass on off tap. So turn the lever anti uh, clockwise and that will open up the gas supply and allows the gas then to go through the regulator in into the pipe work. There is a separate isolating point if you wish to use it on the main fee, but if it's in the vertical position, it'll allow the gas to go all the way through. Before you set off and go down the road, it's the reverse, turn it anti-clockwise and that will then close it off and stop the gas flow from coming in. Further on, you've got your mains hookup. In the locker on the opposite side, previous owners left the mains lead. We're using our own one here. Always connect to the side of your van, first of all. So pull the cap back, open up the flap on the side with the cap at 90 degrees, push in nice and firmly, and then go over to your sight post and connect to your sight post. Don't do it in the opposite direction of connecting to the sight post, first of all, because you're putting a live lead into the side of your van. Next door, you've got your fresh water filler cap. The key that's unmarked, I believe, is the one that opens up that cap. Just a straightforward hose pipe straight in. Underneath the back bumper, there's an isolator valve, which you'll need to make sure is closed, so that obviously you're keeping the water into there. You can buy, as an optional accessory, a 12-volt submersible pump. It plugs into that 12-volt socket just there and it enables you to pump water up from, say, an Acrol or a water container of some description. Right at the very back, if you're going to use your water heater on gas, you'll need to take this cover off first of all. I always keep mine on top of the steering wheel, boss, as a reminder to me to put it back on before I depart. But when you're traveling, or if you're only going to use the water heater on mains electric, it can stay in situ, like so. Just make sure it's clicked back on with a nice firm snap. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your wastewater, so that's the gray water from your shower tray, your vanity unit, and your kitchen sink. And then you've got the main fresh water drain point as well. Using the big metal key, you can access the spare wheel location as well. So just open up these flaps. Bit of a fiddle, and you will get there eventually. 
it just creeps up and you can then get access then into the spare wheel. You have a Fiamma F45 rollout awning, put the hook through the eye, make the handle into a crook and then wind out. We'll only wing it out so far because it's exceptionally windy today, but you have screwed up into the Palmet two legs. And the idea being is that you bring the ends out first of all to make a right angle and then drop each leg down like so. All right, wind it off through the unit and then bring it down into position, peg out accordingly. You can use tie down straps as well, but these are designed as sunshades in wet or windy conditions. They've got to be put away. When you put it away, make sure that the foot is flat against the pelmet. There's a little clip in there so that when you squeeze in from the far end, it locks into position accordingly and then wind it back in like so. Down under the bed, you've got on the outside, you've got an external locker and again, it pops open. Previous owners left you some leveling wedges, um, some chocks, your little stand in there. You've got the silver screens for the, wind, uh, for the windscreen as well. Uh, warning triangle and your main lead also. And we'll just very carefully put the winding handle in there as well for the awning. You've got a full size cover, which is just there. We'll leave that inside the van. Um, as I said to you on the day when you were uh, looking at it, obviously it's a big effort to get it on, but it does make a difference in terms of preserving the condition of the van. Ventilation for the fridge so that the fridge can breathe. And just inside the caravan door on the right hand side, you've got your electric step switch. Like so. And a split folding door on this one as well. So undo the latch and you can make it into two sections, like so. So, to go into the bonnet, you've got your bonnet release on the left-hand side of the footwell. Pull the lever back towards you very carefully. And when you go around to the front, more or less in the middle, you've got your lever, pull up onto that one. If you ever need to jump start the vehicle, the positive goes onto that section there and the negative goes onto this unmarked bolt fitting at the back. Your oil filler is down at the front with the dipstick adjacent to it. Screen wash, power steering fluid, brake fluid and your radiator header tank all along there. When you first come into the motorhome, you've got two switches. So we've already established you've got your rocker switch for the uh, rollout step. You've got two switches. One is a master for the interior light above your head, above the bathroom door. And then the other one is for an outside awning light, which also partially illuminates into this space as well. If you need to change the bulb on this one, just undo the tabs, reach in, and you can change the bulb filament internally. The main 12 volt control panel is at this end of the van. It's a digital control panel called an EC200. All of your interior control is done from that top left hand switch. Select and then you can obviously then operate your individual 12 volt lights accordingly. Water pump you would use on demand. You'll hear it buzzing uh, slightly just to maintain and take up the pressure within the system. After you've done your activity of washing up, have a shower, I would always recommend that it's switched off. By default, you always use your leisure battery, but in an emergency, you could use the engine battery. And you do that by pressing the black and white battery switch and it will change over. So we're now using the engine battery as an alternative source of supply. The AUX button, its sole purpose in life is to turn on these two corner lights. All the other light switches have their own individual element switches onto them. Left hand, 
uh, sorry, right-hand controls, go up and down through them, and this will give you information as to the condition of your van. So it'll give you the condition on your leisure battery, your vehicle battery, fresh water, wastewater. Uh, you're, never, you're only going to ever use the internal pump on this one, and then um, your clock settings as well. All right, go up and down to change those settings around. And it will take you then back to the main start finish button on there. So your main control panel is located at the back of the wardrobe. We've connected the van to the power supply externally. We've connected into the side of the van. With this cover flipped up, you can push up on the end switch. You can carry out a circuit breaker test to establish that you've got mains into the van and you can then come across and turn on all of the mains functions. This will operate things like the electric elements for the water heater and the room heating system, which we'll come on to later on. Your three pin sockets will work also. Separately, on top of the unit, you've got a battery charger. All the time that you are plugged in onto mains, it will trickle charge that battery. Uh, you'll hear a circulation fan uh, cut in because it does actually get quite warm and generate some heat. Left hand side, you've got a bank of 12 volt fuses. They're menued onto the instructions there as to which ones they service. Uh, so things like the interior lights, water pumps, fans, and so on and so forth. So we've opened up the space now, which is underneath the bed box. Um, this is to reveal things like the water pump, which is located just there. You have individual isolated taps for the appliances, which are uh, connected to the van. So starting from left to right, you have the one for the cooker and the hob, the room heating system, the gas supply to the fridge, and the gas supply to the water heater. Left-hand side of the locker, underneath the red cover there, lives your leisure battery. And in the back uh, corner, you've got your water heater. Specific to this model, this water heater has a drain valve on it, and this is specifically for winter storage. So at the moment, that yellow valve is in the horizontal position, like so, which is allowing the water flow to go through the system. For winter storage, you would lift it into a vertical position and you'll hear the water discharging out underneath the van and that enables you to drain the water system down. Leave your interior taps open um, and it allows everything to drain out. To reset the unit, you can go back into either horizontal position, either away from you, or towards you and then turn on your water pump turn on the hot water tap in the kitchen and draw the water back through the circuit so you're drawing water from the onboard fresh water tank through the water heater and priming the water system ready for heating up so if you're going to heat the water up on gas you'll need to make sure that you've removed the cover from the outside first of all you simply turn the dial on the outer ring section clockwise motion you'll see a little green light come on you may well hear a click from underneath the bed and if the green light comes on and remains constant then the water heater starts to heat up onto gas it takes around about 25 to 40 minutes for the water to reach uh, the maximum temperature but you can adjust the thermostat control if a red light comes on as it has done now it could indicate to you that there's no gas available perhaps it's been switched off or you've run out or that you've left the cover on outside switch the unit off again check your connections and the cover and then turn on once you're satisfied that you've cleared the fault. Back into the wardrobe, if you're going to use the water heater on electric, there's two identical switches. Ultra heat is connected to the room heating system, but if you want to use the water heater on mains electric, turn on the element. Again, it takes around about 35 to 40 minutes or so for the water to heat up to around about 60 degrees centigrade. It's one fixed temperature. If you're in urgent hurry for water, you can turn on the gas water heater and the electric water heater at the same time. The water doesn't get any hotter, it just speeds up the process if that's what's required. Your room heating can operate on electric or gas. Inside the wardrobe, you would turn on the ultra heat mains switch. And then you can make a choice here as to whether you use the 500, 1000, 
or anti-clockwise 2000 watt position. These are going to be subject to the amount of amperage that's available for you to use on a campsite. So I'd equate the 500 to around about 2 amps, 4 amps or 8 amps respectively. There may be certain sites that you go on to where you cannot use the water heater and say the electric heating system at full power at the same time. Different sites will advise you if that's the case. All of the heat that's being generated comes out of the front of the fire by way of convection. If you want to use the, water, the fire on gas, it's an electronic igniter, you'll hear it clicking away, push down, and you'll hear the clicking stop, and you'll be aware of the fact that there's a flame inside the flame chamber there uh, that's lit up, and that will then give you your gas room heating. Again, still works as a convection heater, Separate to that, yet again, you've got a 12 volt circulation fan. What this is going to do is draw the airflow back in over the top of the heater matrix, whether it's being heated via gas or electric. If you put it into the A mode, the thermostat will work in conjunction with that heat output and the fan will cut in and cut out um, accordingly. Stop is in the middle and then you have a continuous fan whereby the dial actually adjusts the speed or the acceleration of the fan like so. In warmer weather, you can leave the heating system off and you can just use the fan on its own. And if you want to, to expand it, you can also use that in conjunction with the fan up in the roof. And what it will do is draw the airflow in, in the direction of the fire, and then obviously then circulate it around the van as well. And it just cools the van down a little bit. It's not air conditioning, uh, but it's a good way of keeping the van stable, temperature wise. With the gas system, if you haven't used the gas for a while, I always advise that you burn the gas off on the hob, first of all. So open up all of the sections. Choose a burner, preferably one of the larger ones. So we'll go for that knob there, and then price and put on the clicker, and it should draw that gas flow straight through. If there's an intermittent to it, it could indicate that the gas is either turned off or you're about to run out of gas. Light up all of the burners. If you light up these, first of all, you're improving the continuity of the gas supply through to the rest of the van. So lighting things like the water heater and especially the fridge will happen more efficiently because you've cleared any potential air locks out of the system. If you want to use the oven or the grill, remove any plastic or protective packaging for transit, first of all, and then for the grill, push in, hold in, and a couple of clicks, and you should see the gas burner take on. And it's a similar story for the oven. Again, push in, hold in for a couple of seconds, and it should light up more or less spontaneously. Turn off, obviously, when the van is in use, uh, when you're traveling, I should say, not in use. So your fridge is a three-way model. Up at the top, 12, uh, the zero is indicating that it's off. If you want to use the fridge on gas, you need to make sure that the van is level. You'll see and hear um, a clicking noise in the background and you should see an amber light come on just like so. If the gas supply is poor coming through to the unit, this light will begin to flicker, indicating that it hasn't lit. If it hasn't been used for a while, it may take several times of you turning the system off and on again to get it to positively ignite. You'd use the gas supply if you were while camping. If you're plugged in onto main hookup, again, the van still needs to be level, so you'd use those wedges that was left by the previous owner to line the van up, use a spirit level on a flat worktop to make sure that you could see that the van was level. Turn the dial to the next position and it'll put it into mains. On the gas and on the electric, the thermostat is adjusted on the right hand side of the dial, the thicker the line, the colder the fridge will become. When you're traveling from A to B, you shouldn't be traveling with the gas on. You obviously can't connect to the mains, so you put it into this battery mode. This will only illuminate when the engine is running. It's taking a direct feed from the alternator to maintain the temperature within the fridge. If you haven't chilled the fridge in advance, it won't make the fridge get cold on your journey. As soon as you reach destination, switch back to mains or gas, whichever is appropriate for the location that you've gone to. 
If you want to sleep the van as two singles, simply just take the backrest cushions away. If you're gonna sleep it as a double, then there's a set of sliders which come out from here and then draw the mattresses into the middle. I would, however, recommend that you flip these cushions over so that it then gives you, um, you sleep on the back of the cushion rather than the front and the bolster's not into the middle of your back. When you get to destination, you may well want to watch some television. I recommend that you buy a 12 volt TV rather than a mains TV. But you have a telescopic aerial that goes up through the roof. So first of all, undo the plastic rows at the top. If you look on the shaft, there's a red dot. The red dot represents the front of the aerial. So at the moment, the aerial's reaching and going over my head and pointing perhaps in the direction of the signal. So you'll need to know which direction to point the aerial into. Lock it into position, like so. The aerial's on a flat plane. If you use the toggle on the bottom and rotate it, it will turn it onto a vertical plane that you might need for certain types of transmitters. But for traveling, make sure it's back into the horizontal plane. Make sure that the aerial is pulled down. And I suggest that the red dot is facing backwards towards the back of the vehicle. With the aerial up and extended, there's an amplifier switch. It comes on with a 12 volt circuit. You can elect to turn it on and off independently if you so wish. You don't have to worry about the low or the gain on these new aerials because the signal strength now and generally across the UK is strong enough that it's not required. So you've got a 12 volt socket there, um, an aerial output socket and a mains. Um, there's also a um, connection for the DVD unit. If you've got an older TV, um, the DVD unit that's in the front could actually be connected via that system into the back of um, probably an earlier model TV. So with your bathroom, um, one thing to mention is that the shower comes up out of the sink tap. So pull it up, connect it up if you wish to use it, obviously draw the shower curtain around you, and then it's a straightforward on-off control. You'll get a jet of water in one direction. If you turn the head, it will become your shower nozzle instead. We heated this water up earlier, so you now see the steam rising, indicating that that's all operational as well. Turning right the way around, we've got the toilet. So we've charged our toilet cassette externally. If you want to use it, seat up, pull the wastegate lever across from this position to that position so that you're opening up the slider, let your waste go straight through, and then to flush press down on that button and you should hear the buzzer come in and you'll hear them see the water from the flush water reservoir going around the inside of the bowl. After you've finished using it, close over accordingly. When the cassette's getting full, you'll see an indicator light coming on here telling you that it needs to be emptied. Recommend that you only use um, toilet paper that's designed for chemical tanks because regular toilet papers can sometimes clog. So with your windows, you've got latches on the bases. You can, for ventilation, just put them into an open position like so, so it just gives you about a half inch gap along the back of the glass. Never ever drive with the windows in this position. You can get airflow underneath and it can cause the windows to break out. If you want to open them further, then push out and just use the uh, tightening knobs on the left and right hand side of these windows and that will then hold that window unit out accordingly. You've got a fly screen which comes down from the top clips onto the blind and you can draw it back up then for the blind like so. Your Hecky roof light is similar to the main windows. It has an additional little knob you need to push in to make sure that you release the latches on both sides. You can then just push up nice and firmly and the whole roof light will open up to around about 45 degrees. The handle can be disconnected from the roof light and it can be brought down and latched on to the inside shelf and it gives you about a four inch gap at the back of the roof light and just stops it potentially from blowing up. Before you fully close the roof light, 
there's a bottom position on that E bracket and again it will give you a small gap. Same as before, if you're traveling you need to make sure that the roof lights are secured down into the lowest possible position before your departure. Push the handle back up out of the way, night time, there's a blind which comes from one direction, daytime use, you can just filter out some of the light using the fly screen. Oh, night time obviously just to stop some of the bugs from getting in and out. For the extractor fan, um, you've got an in and an out arrow. When you're wanting to change direction, make sure that the fan physically stops and then change direction. You can increase the speed, one, two, and three. And also you've got an opening function to actually open up the main top as well. Again, for departure, you need to make sure that the top section is fully closed. So in the cab area, if you turn on the 12 volt, if you turn on the ignition, it will automatically switch off the 12 volt in the back. So nobody can travel in the back with any lights or equipment um, turned on. Ventilation controls are centrally located. You have your directional controls for the positioning of the fan, your temperature control in the middle, and then the speed of the fan, like so, and then a recirculate button if required, turning the airflow over. Reverse on these, down on the clutch, there's a collar around the gear lever, push over and push back, and that will engage the reverse. That also turns on the reversing sensors as well on the back. Light controls. On the outside of the stalk, you've got your side lights and dipped headlights, and then there's the option of a rear fog light as well. The horn is on the end of the stalk. And then the opposite side, you've got a very straightforward uh, wiper control. So down for single speed, down for the double speed, and then up for intermittent. Sorry, say that again. On the right hand side, you've got your uh, wiper controls. So down for intermittent, and then down for the next speed thereafter, and then down for the fastest speed, and then just back on the stalk for your rinse. The washers are mounted into the wipers, like so. Down on the door, you've got your mirror controls, so you can electrically adjust those, turn the toggle in the direction of the mirror that you want to adjust, and then adjust accordingly and then you've got your electric window controls on either side as well. So you have a rip speed radio CD player in your cab for playing CDs and DVDs. Open up the front. In this instance, we'll slide a DVD into here and then close over. Your source button, if it's not already selected, will give a read and if we turn on this switch adjacent to the unit, it will turn on your screen up here also, and the two are linked together. If you see DVB-T showing, go into your menu and use the plus and minus buttons to go into the input select, press menu again, and then switch it from AV1 to AV2 and it should then link the two screens together. If you're playing back on DVD, um, if you click on the OK button within each screen, it should take you through the various different uh, sequences in order for you to um, choose your options and go to your you play screen and a regular volume control within that unit as well. So that concludes the handover for your Luna X Star. If you have any questions, please get in contact with us, but hopefully it's going to deliver you lots of smiles and lots of miles. All the best. Take care.